<laughs> well, let's get into it, folks. Here is my mausoleum build. Uh, a few up close images of it. Here's some of the brick and the door on one of the walls. Uh, my overhead lighting setup for the photo you're going to see here in a minute. Uh, it just this, this is a really cool, fun set and a build. Uh, let's take a look at one of the images before we get into actually how I built this. You can see in the background, uh, you know, some really nice texture, even though I've got a little separation there between Jason and the mausoleum. It shines really nicely through there, the texture and the color uh, and the realism. Jason's nicely lit, great pose. Uh, I did some um, color dodging and stuff on the, sword, uh, the machete. Uh, you know, this is just a really fun fun image uh, a really cool build and i want to show you folks how i did the build uh, the first part of this video is going to be the actual construction of the the cutting of the walls and the laying of the bricks uh, so get into it <laughs> here uh i'm moving the camera to my workbench and i'm just i've taken a piece of foam board uh this foam board here that i'm using is not from a dollar store this is actually the the good foam board uh that i i think i bought it at michael's um, but you can get it at Hobby Lobby or wherever you get foam board but i went with this because there's going to be some weight to it there's going to be a lot of individual bricks that are hot glued to it ultimately and i need the uh foam inside to be pretty dense the dollar store foam that you get it's good for some things but it's not a real dense foam on the inside and the backing isn't really on adhered to the foam uh as well for a build like this that's gonna have like you know sheetrock mud and stuff on it and some moisture i don't want really any warping going on so what i did is i basically uh, i'm going off of a sort of a reference picture here that i googled you can see it to the left of the frame there on my workbench uh and it's just gonna kind of give me an idea of what i'm going you know what my look is going toward so i put the creep show figure on there t for scale to kind of see where the door would be um how high it should be and and that's what i'm doing i'm just uh carving out with the blade uh the door on both sides uh the mausoleum has two sides oh it has four sides but uh, two doors one on each side the front of the back so <laughs> once i've got that pretty much lined up uh, I just kind of loosely put in the boards together to see what um, if all my lines and my cuts and, are, are good and, you know, everything's going to line up, you know, uh, nice when I actually go to glue this. Uh, and I want to put a couple windows in here. I want one on each side also. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to draw out a grid using the grid on my work mat there. I'm just going to make like a two by two grid. Uh, well, I think it's more than two by two. Uh, forget what the measurement on the windows was i think they're like four inch but um and so that's what i'm doing i'm just making a grid and then i'm gonna trace a uh, sort of a pattern out on there and use it as like a stencil to to make a, a window uh, for each side and that's all i'm doing here it's you know you can use uh, whatever methods you want you can cut you a piece out of paper or foam or whatever and and just make a template that's all this is uh, i just did it a little fancier i don't know why sometimes i <laughs> overdo it <laughs> i turn the whole house to get the light bulb out instead of just turning the light bulb <laughs> but anyway uh I mean, it's a cool technique to get, you know, a right measurement if that's what you want to do for for a window like this. And so you can see I'm just going through uh, and counting off the squares to uh, lay down the Sharpie on there to make the window the appropriate size. Um, and, you know, I kind of didn't know if I wanted to go with uh, just an open window, which is the cheap, lazy way. <laughs> <laughs> to put a window in uh it's a mausoleum right it doesn't need glass it's hundreds of years old the glass has fallen out by now but that's lazy <laughs> so um you know i kind of went back and forth did i want like busted wrought iron in there or what did i want to do uh and being that i had bought some 3d printers recently to try out which i now know that those are a lot more work than just pushing print and coming out with something great <laughs> but anyway uh, i did create a barred window frame inset and i'll show you that later on in one of the other builds in, in one of the other videos in this series on this build uh I think I actually prefer, and it might just be the way, like I said, I designed the bars in the 3D printer, but, and printed them. Uh, I think I prefer, you know, the DIY crafting method of making a window frame. It just gives 
the look is a little bit different. It's a little more surreal than than um, a more realistic looking. I don't want to mix totally realistic looking stuff uh, that comes from a 3D printer with the sort of surrealistic, uh, almost real looking stuff that you get from, you know, foam and stuff like that. And so I, I don't know that I really like it. I mean, I, I like it, but I just don't think it matches. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and, and so it's kind of, can be kind of distracting, but I'll let you guys see it later on. Anyway, so I get my uh, pins here that I, I, and I always use these pins. Um, and I got my hot glue gun warming up and, uh, we we'll just pin this in place and we'll go ahead and run a bead of hot glue down the inside of it. And you know, those pins will hold it there while it's cooling. And you'll see a goof I made here later. And I always do this every time. I just don't learn. Uh, I would be more impressed with myself if I made a new error, but it's the same old air and I do it every time you'll see uh, but once uh, that's dried and I'm using hot glue here because it dries quickly and it's strong and this is kind of a heavy piece because there is sheetrock mud on here there's paint and, and a bunch of individual little bricks uh, and so it does you know uh, hot glue is the best for uh, you know this uh, build that I, I thought uh, I thought it would be the best so uh, at any rate now I use the gorilla glue sticks on here uh, they don't pay me at all to say anything about them um, they are really strong uh, and I don't know what it is but they are really stringy also um, I'm not sure if that's a temperature thing uh, or a glue gun thing uh, they do hold really well but there is a lot of stringing that comes along with using them. Uh, so be prepared to get a dry paintbrush out and take off. I don't want to give the idea that they just string everywhere gobs like, you know, a spider spewing web out of control. But just be mindful that there there is some stringing and there will, might be a little cleanup uh, for some strings that you didn't see while you were doing the build. Uh, you know, if you're going to do the photography part of this, you know, you're going to uh, need to get a dry brush or have a pair of tweezers on standby because you might see some strings that, um, you know, you didn't see before. And uh, you want to clean that stuff off of there before you actually get into the photography part of, you know, uh, your build if you're using Gorilla Glue Sticks uh, and doing something similar. Um, but, uh, you know, I've got wood glue there too. Gorilla, that, that's gorilla wood glue. Then I've got a gorilla glue stick there. Uh, I don't have a gorilla hot glue gun. I, I don't know if I think they make one. Um, I should maybe see about a temperature controlled glue gun. That might help some of that stringing. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it's a good glue and it was great, uh, for this build because I needed strength, uh, in the build, uh, the building pieces and strength in the, you know, adhesive products you know that i use to join everything together uh because there is going to be later some moisture like i say in this we're going to paint and sheetrock mud and a couple different things and that all adds moisture to the um the walls of the build and i'll show you normally what i would do and i'll show you that as we start laying the bricks is is i would use a pva glue for that uh but that's a lot more moisture than is necessary and i'll show you a trick that i did to get around that uh and help fill in the gaps also uh, and seal this foam board at the same time but here we're just kind of making sure everything looks good adding a little bit more glue where i think it's going to need it later uh you know making sure everything's nice and strong and secure as it can be And if it's helpful, I'll link some of this stuff in the description of the video. Also, you might find you want to get some Gorilla Glue sticks or some, you know, stick pins or something. I'll try to remember to put that stuff in the video description. Uh, people do ask about that. And uh, if I can help recommend something that I think uh, works for me and uh, that I use it, then and, and I think it might work for you, then man, by all means, I'll link it for you, for you folks. Just giving it a once over look before the next section. Right, let's get into laying some bricks. Making some bricks, first of all. This 
So here I have the Proxon cutter uh, and I've created sort of a, um, it's, it's a, basically it's a foam cutter uh, and I've created a tall fence for it. And these bricks are going to be laid out. Um, they're one inch by one inch and then I'm going to cut that uh, piece in half also. So right now we're just doing the one inch by one inch long strips, okay? And uh, you know, you can see that's what I'm doing here. I just made a fence for it so that I can lay taller pieces of foam on there because the fence that it comes with, which is the piece to the left, that long tubular uh, aluminum piece with the yellow protractor looking thing attached to it, that that's the fence that comes with it and it's not very strong so what i did is i just made one out of wood but anyway uh i'm cutting the one inch by one inch square strips for these bricks and this part is <laughs> really uninteresting <laughs> and not fun but the reason i do it this way and i didn't come up with this method i actually learned this a few years ago from another channel uh black magic craft who makes stuff for uh Dungeons and Dragons and table games and stuff like that. Uh, some really great crossover tips and tools to use from uh, Dungeons and Dragons table games and stuff like that to this type of photography that, that we do. Uh, just a different scale. But so what I'm doing now is I did the one inch by one inch and then I'm moving my fence in to half inch and I'm going to cut those pieces in half. I just got my little measuring uh, tape measure out and I measure a half inch from the fence to the hot wire cutter uh, filament there. And then um, I will cut each of those strips. Uh, I will run them up the blade there, or run them up the, the, the wire there and cut them in directly in half. So now I've got a half inch um, strips coming out of there and I'll rip all those down. I say rip because it's like it's a table saw, but that's what I'll do. I'll cut all those right up the middle. And, uh, and like I say, it's not very fun, but this produces a brick that is like an old stone type cobblestone looking, you know, handmade brick. Uh, and, and it really provides the randomness and the, the shape and the form of something more realistic than just you know, scoring foam, running and pin through it, uh, and, you know, making a brick wall, you know, like that, that, that has its place too. But in this build, I didn't want to do that because, uh, I was going for a little bit more of a realistic, uh, look, something with a bit more depth and texture to it than, like I say, just scoring the wall with a razor and then dragging a, um, pin through there. Now we're going to turn those on their end <laughs> and run them through and you can see it's making individual bricks uh it is boring <laughs> but uh it's a great way to make brick and you know this proxon cutter is a great way to if i didn't have this cutter i wouldn't be able to make bricks like this i am not cutting those with a blade one by one you can forget it <laughs> and here is the end result <laughs> a bucket of bricks Whew. but they're all sharp edged uh, brick. There's no texture to them. There's no anything to them. Um, and we're going to get into how I do that here right now. I got a big jar with some really rough stones in there. Uh, this jar is like the kind that gives the animal crackers that you buy at Costco or something like that, the cheese puffs or whatever at Walmart. Uh, I put some really rough stones in there, then I drop a few handfuls of the bricks inside there and I tumble that around. And when I tumble that around, those rocks hit those foam bricks, pitting them and gouging them and softening them up, uh, creating, uh, you know, taking away all those hard lines that were left by the Proxon cutter. Uh, and so it's just a really good way to quickly shape those bricks into something a little bit softer uh, and take away all those hard lines. Now, uh, it's not very fun shaking, 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 and then shaking some more. And then when you open the lid, so you're gonna shake here, it creates a pink dust inside there. And so when you open the lid, it's best to open it outside. I don't. <laughs> Why? Because I just don't. 
But uh, you can see as you tumble it around in all different directions, uh, those bricks are becoming more and more, uh, the shape of them is becoming more and more changed uh, and the edges are going away. You know, and if you're gonna do bricks like this, it's good just to make a whole bunch, a whole bucket full like I did. That way you have them for your next project, you know, um, because though it is a painstaking way to do it and you need a lot of time, uh, it, it is really one of the best ways that I've ever seen to do brick. Uh, especially if you're doing a brick wall where you're doing a brick and then you're laying a stucco on top of it so you've got these layers of you know broken stucco and brick underneath and this is really the the best way to bring that type of texture out and uh create a real awesome um level of depth to your to your styrofoam wall because that's what this is it's a styrofoam wall and you're trying to make it look you know, as uh, not styrofoamy as possible. Look at that dust, pink dust. Uh, but watch this brick that comes out. I'm gonna put up a before and after image here. Uh, look at the dust flying <laughs> across the light. <laughs> God, when will I learn? But um, I'm gonna take a picture of these two bricks and show you the before and after and why that tumbling process is so important. If you don't do it, uh, then it's just, it's not going to look good. We'll bring this picture on my phone uh, up on the screen here in just a second. You can see close up just what the tumbling does. And it actually changes the size of the brick. It takes away some of the mass of the brick too. Uh, and it creates all that random uneven, you know, um, pattern that you just couldn't do you know by hand it just makes a really nice brick so at any rate now uh, i'm going to separate the rocks from the bricks and um put a whole handful of them in that pan right there that i'm going to use because the next part of this is we're going to be putting them on the walls of the building it's another fun part <laughs> you know um and, and somebody told me, man, that just, that's dedication. You know, and I think about it this way. If I'm going to invest time in building something and I'm going to show people, I just don't want to throw something together, man, because, you know, it just represents me. My work represents me. And though I'm not the best, if I can see something looks really sloppy, I know other people can too. And I, and I just want it to look good. I don't want anything to take away from the photography that I do. I want it all to just, you know, go well together. But uh, at any rate, so we're going to inspect these bricks and uh, take a look at them. Make sure that I think I've tumbled them enough because sometimes some will be tumbled and some won't look as good as others in there. So... You might have to put them back in and shake them around a little bit more, but we're looking pretty good right here. Let's move on to laying some of these bricks uh, onto the building. There I've got the Gorilla Glue and my glue gun. And you're gonna see I use, I'm gonna start on the edges here and I'm gonna make sure that I can get like an overlap on the edges from wall to wall that, uh, and sometimes, you know, one brick is a little bigger than the other, a little wider than the other. Um, on the corners, I really want to make sure that they're pretty uh, equal in size. So we're going to lay down the corners first and you can kind of approach, you know, probably yours, however you, you want windowsills first or and work out or edges first and whatever. But that's what I do. I do that. I started on the corners um, and then I worked my way inward. Uh, either way, it takes a while. You can see here, uh, I, you know, change up. Once I get my corners laid down, I'll change up my glue method and I'll lay a long string of glue down and then I'll put the, you know, bricks on that string of glue uh, or that bead of glue that I've laid down and it saves a little bit of time. But one reason to that I use the hot glue here is that um, it's going to create a seal between the... Uh, paint that's going to go on the outside it might work its way down into the cracks uh, and ultimately rest against the foam board until it dries and create warping this hot glue actually uh, is like a, like a mortar kind of it will create an additional like waterproof backing between the brick and the uh, wall of the foam board and so it'll help create some rigidness and it's faster than doing each one of these bricks 
with a PVA glue. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is the process that I use to make the bricks. And, um, you know, if you want to tackle a project like this using this method, then I guarantee it's going to come out great. And it's going to come out in a way that is much better than if you did just, you know, drawing your brick lines, scoring them with the razor, dragging a, a dull object through them to widen the gap out, and then throwing some black wash in there, painting them up. This is going to give you a whole different look uh, to your brick building or brick wall. Anyway, folks, like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next video in this series. And uh, till the next time, take care.